get everybody's attention. I know a few of you are grabbing food and that's good because we want you guys to eat what's left. We're going to share the ideas from each of the breakout groups. Um, we should hear some similarities but also some different things as well. Um, this has been really good conversation. I feel like if we had more time we could share a lot more and I'm sure when you guys leave here tonight you're going to probably think of something that you haven't thought of here tonight. Um, and we hope you guys will come back and share that. So, um, Mr. Steve Britton was voluntold out of our group to please share and be a representative for um, group one. So, if you guys are ready, we're going to go ahead and get started back. Okay, so uh, we had a really good discussion. Under our concerns for highway safety, we came up with basic stuff, uh, speeding, distracted driving, um, which is uh, big. I think it's probably just about as important as speeding. And I think I read somewhere that distracted driving is more, there are more fatalities from distracted driving than from um, DUS, driving while under the influence. We, we also talked about um, uh, what we could do. One of them was come up with a way to disable technology. I know the Apple phone has a, uh, a switch on it where you can say uh, it'll um, turn your phone off while you're driving uh, if you enable it. I don't think anybody ever enables it. Uh, also, um, being aware of heavy equipment and farming on the roads, um, pedestrians. That also comes under distracted. Uh, people will step out in front of traffic. How do you uh, help with that? How do you try to do that? One of the other ones is road design. Uh, I was down at Greenville today. They're doing a lot of work down there on road design. They're uh, rerouting a lot of things. Uh, that was the attention of the driver, impatience. We've all seen that. We've all been there and doing that too, I'm sure. Uh, also, watch out for other motorists. Um, some of the, thing, the other pet peeves are uh, unrestrained children riding in the car. We've all seen that too. Well, how can we affect change? Um, messaging. Again, that's one of those we have to figure out how do we message to where uh, people actually, uh, where you can get to people. Um, education. How do we get edu How do we get that out the word in education? Uh, where do we teach? Um, workplace advocacy, uh, peer pressure, um, that's under, also under positive influence, um, additional highway patrol, uh, we, we only have four, three to four um, patrolmen assigned to Edgecombe County from what we learned. Um, funding, which is probably uh, one of the toughest parts of it. Uh, putting in neon markings so that you can see the road, particularly at nighttime in the rain. Um, signage for cycling, share the road. Um, signs that say bicycles have the right to the right lane, things like that. 
electronic signs, making it aware that there are cyclists on the roads uh, up ahead, so people will be on the lookout. Um, we have to re reallocate resources and um, putting in bike lanes, sharrows, you know, the share arrows on the right lane kind of thing on a four lane road. Let know that, again that bicycles do have the right of way on the bike on the road. They have they share the road just like any other um, motor vehicle or any moving vehicle. Um, we have to get a public awareness uh, that comes along with education. Again, that's something we have to work on around this area. We've discussed that we don't have any mass media in this area, so it's either Facebook or something. Um, we don't have to be that, or we can come up with something else, maybe through the state. Driver training. Teaching the rules of the road, making sure people actually understand the rules of the road. Most people, especially when you're that age, 15, 16, all you want to do is drive the car, get me out of the classroom, I can go with my buddies on the road. So uh, they do need to learn the rules of the road. And that's just, it works both ways. Bicyclists need to learn the rules of the road too, riding on the right hand side, not wearing dark clothes at nighttime and having reflectors and lights on your bicycle, that kind of thing. So it works, it works both ways. Uh, we've got mass media targeting the rural areas again, uh, something maybe we can get through the state uh, or get in the local, with local advocacy. Uh, maintaining the infrastructure, we talked about that, we talked about cleaning off the roads and uh, the state's still here, I can't see that. Um, the other one I was going to, we came up with um, Daniel Street, the bridge out that way, it's got glass along the side so you got to get in the road because it's got broken glass. Um, let's see, we've got a weather, weather signage, okay. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Impacted, right. Uh, where flooding, flooding's occurring and things like that. We need that. We used that last week in fact. Um, engineering bicycle lanes, driver experience, uh, teaching defensive driving. I think that was real good. I know. Anybody here is in the military, if you drove on base, we had to take a defensive driving course, and that was where you had to anticipate. When you saw a car coming the other way, you assumed he was going to change, come over into your lane, and you had to plan for that. Or if somebody's on the side, you knew he's going to pull out in front of you, so you planned ahead. Uh, that's something that probably needs to be taught more of. Uh, that goes with virtual training. Everything's done virtually nowadays. They can do some driver training courses uh, on your computer. Uh, community outreach, again, during the parade, during public functions, we can maybe have some sort of presence out there to try to um, advocate for um, car safety, driver safety, cycling safety, we can all live together. Uh, driver feedback with the teens, uh, I don't know what that was. Right, and that goes right there with peer pressure. Right, peer, peer pressure, peer advocacy. Um, fog line, rubble strips. We were talking about that, and you guys uh, on the other group uh, too. We talked about 258, where they put in the rumble strips on the right side, so now it's basically unusable for cycling. Um, we need to look into that and see what, that can, what can be done about that. Um, and that would also come from advice from the DOT, uh, and actually advice to the DOT at a community level. Some feedback from the local communities. Not every community is the same. We're not the same as Raleigh or, or um, Cary, um, and uh, maybe a little bit different than Roanoke Rapids. I don't know. Um, so each community needs to be treated differently with different uh, needs. And then the other one is church involvement. And then that's kind of like we, we are blessed to have so many churches in our community that maybe we could get. Um, we could talk about things like safety, uh, things through through churches, uh, through church meetings, Wednesday night suppers, that type. Of thing. Um, I think that was all. Okay. Anyway, is group number two's turn?
Uh, the thing we learned to talk about was uh, signage for cycling, like uh, on, like on the phone to see farm equipment ahead. We said thank the cyclists. Also, uh, show them big enough. And let's see, faded lane markers we talked about. But for cycling, uh, I said we need four four-way stops. Uh, some of these country roads, you see people doing like 65, 70 miles an hour. So you need to give them a break so that they slow down, which helps cycling also. Uh, discuss, please. Thank you. Good night, Steve. Uh, need more space time for pedestrian crossings and bike lanes. We discussed that. Also, a big thing distraction drivers on the phone. Because uh, I had a friend got killed by a distracted driver. So I can speak that from the heart. Because the lady, she was speeding on her phone and hit a friend of mine from behind and killed him on his bike. So that hit home with me real, real strong. Like I said, try for laws. You, you hit cyclists and kill them. Like I said, all she got was slap on the wrist for uh, unsafe speed. That's all she got. But he lost his life because of her. Uh, like I said, impaired driving. There wasn't a lot of people drink and drive, but sometimes on the bike I'd be riding and a car passed by and you could smell the uh, smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And say, if I can smell it when you drive, okay. I know the car is really strong. <laughs> yeah. No, I ain't saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that story, that's no story. <laughs> And like I said, also, uh, it gives the points for getting the fitness cycles, uh, which you can check on. Because I know they're talking about increasing the, the, the driving points to hit a cycles or pedestrian. Increase that. Kind of what they did to my getting five points. If you, the person is killed, it's a great idea. Thank you, please. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Also, uh, the magic one said, make people slow down. That's a big thing. Like I said, because Edgecombe County is what? Rural, right? So people use highways going too fast. Like I said, if they didn't hurry, going nowhere. Uh, more funding for enforcement. We're talking about uh, increasing the uh, police force presence on highways. People will slow down. Uh, Pills for people who loan vehicles to smile their lawful license. In other words, uh, make them an accessory to the crime, which also help uh, curtail people who lose their license because of uh, DUIs. Also, GPS devices for crash notifications. So, say you're driving and all of a sudden you get a GPS notice up ahead, there's an accident, so the person will slow down. And more inspections for tractor trailer truck safety. Some of these vehicles are not inspected, these tractor trailers. One of the EMTs, about uh, when the fire said uh, their vehicle was hit while at an accident by a tractor trailer. Mm -hmm. And that's what we discussed. Questions, comments? Thank you all very much. This, this is just fantastic discussions and points. It's exactly what we wanted to get out of this group. And uh, I want to once again thank the folks who provided our food and provided our facility. The food was just fantastic. <laughs> So the big question we have now is kind of where do we go from here? And the last thing we want to do is come into a community, have, have these discussions, have these great ideas, and then leave. Um, the difficulty is with a, you know, with a small staff and a small purview, what we can do is support local efforts, but we can't really be the local. So there's a couple of ways that a community like Edgecombe County can keep this mobility going. 
One of the things that we've got all across North Carolina are groups called Vision Zero Communities. And these Vision Zero Communities all <clears throat> are composed of folks like yourselves, individuals in particular communities who have an interest in promoting traffic safety and keeping discussions going and recognizing that your needs in Edgecombe County may di be different from what they need in Chapel Hill, which may be very different from Bar, which may be different from Emerald Isle. All of these communities have their own particular focus on addressing traffic safety. These groups generally meet about uh, three uh, times, uh, about once every three months, rather, uh, putting together detailed plans for addressing traffic safety in their communities. What we've also found is that a number of these communities then apply for a federal funding source talked about called Safe Streets for All. And the Safe Streets for All grant allows for funding to be not just around behavioral change and not just around uh, structural change, but actually both. And so a number of communities that have had these kinds of discussions and that are working around the idea of a Vision Zero community, which then has sustainable funding through a source like Safe Streets for All. So that's one route that you all can potentially go if you want to continue these discussions and make a, a specific, uh, make a continued and sustained difference. If that's something that you want to do, what, our next step will be to reach out to all of you. We've got your emails, we've got your phone numbers reach out to you, we'll compile these notes, and then from there, we will help you, but it will be something that your community may want to do to keep this discussion going, is to have an ongoing Vision Zero effort. <clears throat> Fortunately, we also have another project that's run out of Chapel Hill called the Vision Zero Community Collaborative, where communities that have an interest in doing this kind of planning work has some technical assistance and works with other our other 21 Vision Zero communities to try to build these kinds of efforts and keep them sustained in your community. So that's one route for potentially addressing the concerns that you started here and want to keep going. In each of those communities, there's generally a spark plug, there's generally an organization that uh, is kind of the and helps put those together. We can certainly help you in Edgecombe County identify such a computer. But the main thing that we don't want to do is leave you. Um, in addition, a number of folks have asked about funding and ways that potentially we can help fund efforts. The Governor's Highway Safety Program funds specifically around behavioral safety so we can fund traffic safety efforts that address behavior. That can be through education, that can be through enforcement, uh, that can be through any of those uh, techniques. So uh, feel free to continue to reach out to us and any way that we can help, if potentially that is funding, that's something we can look into, but we can offer a lot of technical assistance as well. But I don't want you to think that we're going to leave you, and I don't want you to think that this is the last time that, uh, that we're going to be down here it's not going to be. Uh, we are pleased, for instance, we work very closely with Sheriff Atkinson. We're pleased to do that. We work with a number of our law enforcement partners, some of our cycling and pedestrian partners. We want to continue to do that as well. So I want to especially thank Tina Parker and her work in, um, in helping convene this, uh, this effort. Um, the good folks here at Edgecombe Community College for uh, helping us put this together, and all of you who've been here showing your uh, personal, individual, and shared your stories, shared your hearts, and uh, that has really made a difference for us tonight. So I want to thank you all. It's about uh, 8 o'clock. It's time for us to, to wrap up. Any last-minute comments, any last-minute thoughts as we wrap things up? Where, where you were talking about, uh, thank you, uh, where you were talking about the convenience, um, I was thinking about what Dr. Brown said earlier about the fact that uh, our former county manager, uh, Mr. Carmen, 
we're talking about getting off the list, you know, the bad list, and we're at the bottom of a good list, and things like that. Where our current county manager, Eric Evans, he started such an initiative, and it's called Get Off the List. And so I was just looking up on my phone the fact that um, he's divided us up into like four different categories. There's one, I'm on the education and workforce uh, group, and I know there's one called like youth and families, and I think there are like two others, housing and uh, one other. So perhaps we can talk to him, maybe it would fit under youth and families, but to me it's like what would make sense to go ahead and connect to something that we're already kind of moving forward with. And maybe it could be a subgroup under, you know, one of those programs. There's one on safety. Yeah, there is one on safety. Um, uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, it was, it's, um, it's like a four, well, it says affordable and safe housing. I see youth and families, education and workforce, health equity, and affordable safe housing. So. Equity, right, right. So, you know, maybe we could talk. He couldn't be here tonight, so maybe that could be a conversation we can have. So that's great. Idea. That is a great idea. We're we're happy to follow up and arrange that in any way that we can. Yes, sir. Uh, safety ought to be the, the, the top priority in any uh, area, but I would challenge our uh, local um, law enforcement um, to form some kind of committee. And, and um, you know, have people on that committee that meets every so often and report back to y'all or something like that. That's what I would love to see. But I think it ought to, law enforcement ought to be included. And if they want to add anybody else. But that's what I would love to challenge them to do. I think that's a great idea. I know law enforcement has been heavily involved with us around traffic safety issues and Sheriff Atkinson and others in the county that David Wheeler. And I want to commend the sheriff's office because um, I think it won't receptive when they started doing um, um, radar and stuff like that. But if it won't for them, I mean, I travel six to four every day, four and five o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, come back in the evening time. And I know how the, the um, law enforcement used to be on six to four. And I don't know when I see a state patrol now, but I can see uh, uh, the sheriff uh, office out there. And so that kind of helps. But when you don't see anybody out there, you just get out there and say, ain't nobody going to be out there. You just roll, you know. <laughs> so I come in, I was sheriff also yeah. doing that. No, sir. Great. Well, thank you all for being here. We've got some food. I know there's probably enough for folks to take uh, all the time. Uh, we'll be getting folks his lunch tomorrow, if not a midnight snack tonight. Thank you all very much.